okay, well, today I'd like to talk quite briefly about uh, prostitution. What's the anarchists, what do anarchists think about prostitution and so on? And why did I choose this subject in particular? Well, I chose this subject in particular because I was reading in the local paper, in the local media, about how the police have been harassing prostitutes. That is to say, people working in brothels in this area and around the Olympic Park, because this is all to do with the Olympics, and people that are streetwalkers, the lowest class of prostitute, if that's what you want to call it. So I will entitle this Prostitution, the oldest profession or the oldest oppression. I'd like to let you know that I'm not going to give any kind of moralistic thing, that prostitution is bad or, or good or liberating or oppressive. But uh, I think the prostitution is quite interesting anyway. First of all, because it mostly involves women. And um, Christians, Muslims, moralists of all kinds, particularly people in the church, bishops, people in the Conservative Party, the House of Lords, the Labour Party, they're there decrying prostitution. But it's no surprise when they find a bishop dead in a brothel. And I can tell you this, when they find a bishop dead in a brothel, he's not ministering to his flock. And also, why is it uh, so many of these MPs and so many of these lords and so many of these judges and so on use prostitutes, go into brothels, albeit of the high class variety, because the prostitutes or the women that have been hassled are not the women being hassled that are the ones that are serving the MPs and the moralists and so forth. But of course, the lower end of the market, the low class end of the market, the streetwalkers, many of whom are drug addicts, crackheads, uh, smackheads and so forth. Many of them have got to go onto the streets. They've got no choice but to go onto the streets to get their money to pay for their habit. They couldn't pay for their habit on a normal wage, of course, because wages are so pathetically small anyway. And if you've got a habit, you can't keep it up. But people or women are not prostitutes because they've got a habit as well. Some of them have got no jobs. I'm talking about the lower people from my class, people that live on my estate, people that walk the streets outside my estate, down Lehman Street and in Brick Lane and places like that. As I say, there's about a police crackdown on these people. But the, pra the crackdown isn't only to eliminate the unsightly uh, prostitutes on the streets at 2 o'clock in the morning that nobody ever sees unless they're good calling. But it's an attempt to control the area again because not only are prostitutes being harassed, but it's also illegal street traders. It's just people hanging around on the streets anyway. These are the people that are being harassed. So the whole thing about cleaning up the Olympic area and cleaning up the East End. Clean it up for what? I don't know. More control. So anyway, I'd like to talk about prostitution. I kind of uh, always deviate. But let's uh, remember, the prostitution I'm talking about are people selling, uh, selling sex on the streets. Doing business, as they call it. It's because they need the money. People don't do things like this for a laugh because they're depraved and so on. They do it for the money. And as I said, you probably get more money selling your body on the streets than you would stack in the shelves in Sainsbury's. You can probably earn more in a couple of hours than you could a whole day of working behind the bar and so on. Maybe more. And in a day, you could certainly, if you were a hard-working person, probably earn as much as you could in a week in a so-called straight job Stacking shelves in Sainsbury's, for example. So there's no superiority about one uh, one job or another. It's just that uh, one is more uh, paid quicker. And that's the other thing as well of capitalism. Who wants to be exploited working in a working in a supermarket? The least exploitative of capitalist relationships is a one-to-one -one business bargain, if you like, and prostitution is one of them. You pay for the service, the service is done, it's between two people, it's untaxed, that's why the state doesn't like it, because it's money and 
out of their control. The church doesn't like it because it's sexuality out of control. The society doesn't like it because society is hypocritical. As I say, I don't think that uh, most prostitutes enjoy work unless they're considered doing specialist services, and I'll talk about that right in the end. Well, I'll say personally, you know, I uh, have never been with a prostitute, I've never paid for sex or anything like that. Not because I'm remarkably handsome or anything like that, and so therefore I don't have to buy sex or I don't need to worry about uh, anything like that. It's just because I don't find anything erotic about it. I just couldn't get it on with someone that I was having to pay for the uh, services and so on. You know, I want a bit of love, I want a bit of sensuality. Uh, Five-minute knee trembling in an alleyway down Bethnal Green doesn't really appeal to me. It doesn't really appeal to many other people, I would imagine. But it does to some, otherwise there wouldn't be the five-minute knee trembler down the alleys of Bethnal Green, would they now? But prostitution is the oldest profession. And in the Western world, if you look back in London, there's been prostitutes in London since the Roman times. It's a thing that they've always tried to stop the church and the authorities, but they've never succeeded in doing it. And what with the Olympic Games coming up now, there's going to be plenty of prostitution, but not on the streets. The prostitution on the streets or the small local brothels are undoubtedly going to be targeted by the police so that they can say they've achieved something, just in the same way that they uh, pick up a few kids with a bit of cannabis so they can say that they've like arrested 20 people in the Whitechapel area for possession of drugs. It looks impressive for their statistics and for the politicians. But really it's just uh, 20 kids picked up at random, or 20 people picked up at random, with a, with a bit of blow, which you could do on any bus or tube. There's nothing to it. High class prostitution, that is to say, the people that will be servicing the politicians, the secret service men, the military, the high ranking police officers, people that are drafted in, the Olympic officials, the VIPs, oh, there won't be any hassle there. There'll probably be an unceasing parade of ladies of easy virtue going into the uh, Hilton Hotel and into the Grosvenor Hotel. There won't be any problems there. The only problems are, of course, on our streets. As always, we are the problem. Now, I don't uh, hold, as an anarchist, of course, I do realise that there is a great deal of exploitation within the prostitution industry. Women that are trafficked, women that are forced into doing it, women that are exploited by pimps and people like that. And also by police officers because they have to pay bribes and things like that. And sometimes give free sex. I don't hold with any of that at all. And I don't think that anybody should be forced to do anything against their will. I'm an anarchist, that's what I think. But at the same time, I am realistic. And if it's a question of starvation or a question of even paying your bills and so on, then obviously I've got absolutely no moralistic attitude about people going out and uh, selling sex. As I say, it's the oldest profession. And not all prostitutes or people that sell sex or sex workers perhaps are um, full time. There's a lot of people pull the odd trick now and again to pay a bill. Or people that have maybe one or two clients that they come over and see once a week and it kind of bolsters up their dull money or their miserable wages. So don't think that uh, everybody's full time and out on the streets and having about 20 customers a, a day or anything like that. It's just not true. And there must be hundreds of thousands of people that do it at one time or another. You can never eliminate prostitution from society. I think it should be tolerated and understood. And I think that the women, the people that are out doing prostitution, particularly at the rough end, should have the protection of society and not the persecution of society. I don't go along with feminists to say that uh, women are betraying themselves by selling their bodies and so on. I actually think that these are people that are rather than starve, or rather than uh, commit heinous crimes, like mugging people to get money to pay for their drug habit, actually go out and try and do something about it. Obviously, I would prefer that people did not have a drug habit. 
we don't want to be slaves to drugs after all but if people do have a drug habit or, or a drink problem then we're not there to condemn them or to moralize about it we only moralize about those that moralize about people that have got stuff like that because usually they've got a hidden agenda and they themselves as you know all these born again christians these church leaders and so on they're always caught out eventually with prostitutes sometimes uh male prostitutes as well but particularly a big thing in america the more homophobic a preacher is the more likely he is to uh, resort to male prostitutes it's happened time and time again it will continue to happen time and time again until the congregation realize that they're being paid for suckers again it will continue to happen now what else can i say about uh, prostitution oh yes if there's a lot of people regard marriage as a sort of legalized prostitution and it could be made a very good uh, case for that and i think that rather than look at prostitution and condemn prostitutes that maybe we should have a whole look at how, uh, the way sexuality is and the way that sexuality exists and all about relationships and things like that it's a it's a wider thing you just can't isolate prostitution and treat it as though it was something that doesn't relate to the rest of society i suppose because it involves sex is why there's uh, usually so much fuss about it now as i say there's a lot of uh, hypocrisy about things like this so i don't think that we should listen to what politicians, police, or anybody like that, church leaders, religious nuts, have got to say about anything like that. Because as we know, as I said, they are immigrants. Prostitutes or whores, as they've been called in the past, have always been scapegoated, whoremonger and whores and so on, and a whore of Babylon and so on and so forth. But in fact, if you look very closely in history, you'll think you see that uh, prostitution, uh, you look around prostitution at the time of Shakespeare, uh, prostitution today, prostitution in the Western world. The prostitutes are not all the same. I mean, for example, there is something about prostitutes. And someone should write a really good history of all the facets of prostitution. It would probably take up many, many uh, volumes. But prostitutes, for example, during revolutions, have usually taken the side of the re revolution and, and have become through the revolution liberated and ceased to be prostitutes but have uh, become revolutionaries during the french revolution for example many prostitutes were working undercover for the french resistance this is something that's not known or really known at all it's not in the history books but if you look carefully enough you'll see that in fact it's quite true so a lot of uh, people in underground resistances against tyranny have been prostitutes. And of course a lot of their clients have been uh, high-ranking members of the oppressive state. So therefore they find it very good to gather information that way. They're unsung heroines of resistance perhaps. There's also a lot of uh, grey areas in prostitution. I mean, it's all right for someone that's healthy to say, oh, I would never use a prostitute and so on. But what about people that can't form a relationship due to their extreme age or disability or maybe the fact that they're uh, socially inept? How are they to realise their libido? How are they going to have uh, sex even if it's only that five-minute knee trembler? Obviously, prostitution. And I don't, can't really condemn people for doing it. <laughs> Anarchists, I don't think, should go out with prostitutes because it is exploitative. But uh, as I say, it's less exploitative than some other things I can think of. For example, I don't think that anarchists should become police officers. Well, it's a bit of a contradiction in terms, it? or screws. Or should basically, if you like, screw over other people, exploit them financially and in other ways. But I think that uh, anarchists maybe as an example shouldn't go out with prostitutes or shouldn't use prostitutes i don't see anything wrong with having a relationship with someone that's a prostitute if you're prepared to do it there's nothing wrong with it uh, 
I don't see um, anything wrong with that. But I do think that if we want to break down alienation, and if we want to have a revolution, and if we want to change society, then by example, we should not go with prostitutes. But I believe that we should support sex writers, uh, sex writers, sex workers against police harassment, against state harassment, against the harassment of the churches, and so on and so forth, that they should be allowed to do their trade without danger to themselves, danger from psychopaths. There's a reason why, for example, uh, murder of prostitutes by serial killers is because these people have got no protection from the police whatsoever. I'm not saying that people should have protection from the police, particularly prostitutes. But um, I am saying that due, due to the fact that they are driven on the ground and they, you know, they're beaten up and robbed, they don't complain to the police or anything like that. Neither do I think that people should be prosecuted for soliciting and so on. As it has to a criminal record, um, uh, when they go straight or don't want to be prostitutes anymore, they'll be on their record, it might be rather difficult for them to get a job and so on. Moralism and their names in the newspapers and so forth. So we don't want any of that. In revolutions, if you look at the Spanish Civil War, which is you know one of the great uh, anarchist revolutions, or anarchists had great participation in it. Anarchists gave out leaflets to their own militia, saying, "Do not use prostitutes," and so on. And you're not a comrade if you use a prostitute. But they did not condemn prostitutes. In fact, some prostitutes with guns in their hands, actually fought in the militias. But prostitution is something that won't go away in a revolutionary society or during revolution. We just want to win over as many people as possible, and that includes people that are prostitutes, and sex workers, and so on. And yeah, some people might say that sex work is a horrible trade, which it probably is, but how like about working in a coal mine? That's not so good, is it? Or working in some industrial plant where you're breathing in crap and it you're dead by the time you're 65, you can't breathe by the time you're 40. And all the other forms of exploitation and so forth. Why, uh, why, do, they, uh, why do they single out prostitution? And I've absolutely no intention of saying to people that are prostitutes, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be taking up an honest trade, uh, maybe working in Sainsbury's or in a factory or working in some low-paid service industry and so forth. I mean, what's the point of that? There's no point in it at all, because none of us want to work like that anyway. At least with prostitution, you get more money. As I said, the only people that we really condemn are people like pimps, people that rob prostitutes, people that traffic women, and so on. These are the criminals. These are the people that should be deported. These are the people that we don't want in our society. Not the women themselves, who are, if you like, in a way, victims, although I don't entirely see them as victims because they're doing it off of their own backs most of the time. I don't see anything liberating in it, but neither do I see anything particularly oppressive about it. It just is, it always has been, and it probably always in one form or another will be. I'd like also to talk now because I've been going on for about 20 minutes and. Uh, you could go on about any subject like this for hours and hours, about the so-called grey areas I mentioned. Not all forms of prostitution that actually involve sexual intercourse. And in fact, the more higher paid forms of prostitution are specialised services such as dominatrices and so on. I'd just like to say that if I was, uh, if I was about 5 foot 10, uh, had a head, female, had a really nice body, uh, long black hair and uh, so on, I would seriously consider going into the uh, dominatrix game because I must admit it would be give me really great pleasure to whip the shit out of some Tory MP or some judge or some high-ranking journalist or uh, opinion former and get paid for it. Yes, I'd really, I'd really like that. And so uh, I can even admit that I would go into the art of prostitution if that's if that's what it entails. But also, I'd say if I was a female, 
and I was starving and I had kids and I had to feed them and so on. I, I, I have no shame about going out onto the streets and doing it if it had to be done. And I think it's the same with most people. And that's what most people will do. But people only do prostitution for one reason, one reason only. Not because they like it. They do it for money. In other words, to survive. If we had a society where money was not so paramount, then maybe there wouldn't be so much prostitution. But the more capitalists we become, the more money rules our lives, obviously, the more we need it, and so therefore the more people are going to become uh, prostitutes. So I say to feminists, and I say to anarchists, and I say to people on the left, and I say to everybody, don't condemn prostitutes, don't condemn prostitution and so forth, condemn the society that creates them, but also don't moralise about prostitution, don't moralise about prostitutes. And the only bit of moralizing they do is about people that use prostitutes. And that's what it is, using prostitutes. And I don't think if you're an anarchist, you should go with prostitutes. If you're an anarchist, could you become a prostitute? Well, I say yes. Why not? If you need money, if you need to pay your bills, if you need to maintain a certain lifestyle, why not? It doesn't really contradict your uh, thoughts and beliefs of anarchism and freedom any more than if you were working for someone else as a secretary or uh, as a toilet attendant or doing any any job at all. So that's about it really. I have uh, been rambling on a bit and I think I've been talking for, for too long. But I just wanted to say a little bit, a little bit about prostitution and, um, and that whenever you read about it in the media, hear about it on television, it's usually shock, horror, and absolutely disgustingly hypocritical. So, till next time, folks, I'll see you around.